This is the Hardcam Wrestling Podcast. Today I am flying solo. I'm flying solo. I'm flying solo. Um, because nobody else wanted to do the pod with us today. Who knows why? But I will be on the NX. I will be on the AEW podcast even uh, with Joseph Hart later on. Um, please follow the podcast on Podbeam. Please follow us on Facebook. Please follow me uh, at Yardy316 on Twitter. Uh, I'm on Facebook as well if you want to send us a friend request. Um, the podcast is on Facebook. Um, and also, I can't remember what else I was going to say, but we're on Facebook. Have I mentioned Facebook enough? Um, just want to say a quick thanks to Vanessa Clifford and her friend i can't remember what her friend is she didn't actually send me her friend's name i'll just message her and uh, ask her what her friend is name because she is a new follower and she or he or she actually uh, vanessa's been a friend for a while um so what is your this is great podcast content i know um Reese, Let's get into the NXT uh, podcast. So it starts off with Leon Ruff heading to the ring for his his uh, North American title match. I always get that mixed up with the US title match. There's a video package that recaps his career so far in Evolve and other independent circuits and what happened last week between him and Johnny Gargano. And Johnny Gargano comes out and just says... Stop, stop. No, he cuts it off. Cuts the video package from playing. Uh, the video package has got loads of Twitter um, tweets from various people showing congratulations and shocks reactions to um, to Leon Ruff. There's a very fast-paced match. Uh, they're getting into it. They're, um, like Johnny Gargano is healing a big style. He's cutting off Leon Ruff in the corner. Um, Hitting him from post to post, hitting him with uh, with the middle rope lawn dart or whatever it is, I call it snake eyes. Um, uh, he's just pasting him, he's taking him to task, he's really, really pissed off. He really wants this belt back. Um, and Leon Ruff kind of hits a bit of a comeback, goes to the top rope whilst. Uh, Johnny Gargano is outside and whiffs a bit of a tope, so he's like goes middle rope, top rope doesn't get any of it but Johnny Gargano sells it nonetheless, which is really 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 bizarre um, it's like that Jeff Hardy uh, was it Jeff Hardy and um, Jinder, I think it was their match where he, he it's a spontan or, or whisper in the wind and didn't get any of it, but Jinder still sells. It's a bit like that. Um, Leon Ruff goes for his crucifix bomb again, but that gets blocked and Johnny hits Leon with a massive clothesline, turns him inside out. He goes for the uh, lawn dart again, hits the lawn dart on the middle rope. Um, doesn't go for a cover, uh, hits him with another middle rope lawn dart into the other uh, other uh, ring post. Um, then later on during the match, Johnny Gargano goes for his top rope DDT. Uh, I'm not even sure what it's called anymore. The, the final beat, I think it's called. Goes for the final beat, he hits it completely and utterly spiking um, spiking Leon Ruff. Damien Priest is on the entrance ramp. Damien Priest is uh, nodding his approval, clapping his hand, giving a round of applause, watching the match, being a bit smarmy. Um, and as as, uh, as as Johnny Gargano is covering Leon Ruff, as, as he's covering the on rough after the uh, final beat, Damien Priest comes, puts 
another phone call that I had to uh, decline, uh, which was bothering me somewhat. Um, so Beard Ruff is pulled out of the ring by Damien Priest. Damien Priest says, sorry, kid, and hits Leon Ruff in the face, giving Leon Ruff the victory and retaining the belt by disqualification. Obviously, disqualifications do not change hands. Uh, belts don't change hands by disqualification. Um, backstage, you've got Cameron Grimes saying he's going straight to the moon. Cameron Grimes, because um, he's not going to be able to see uh, Dexter Loomis' face anymore. He's scared shitless of Damien, uh, of Dexter Loomis. Um, the blindfold match would do, do the job of him not being able to see his spooky face. Then we get uh, Rhea Ripley uh, entering the building. Um, and then we begin the blindfold match. Going back to the uh, Leon Ruffy, uh, that end was all right. It was a bit funny. It, it, it lends into what happens later on. But that, that this particular moment, you're kind of thinking, bloody hell. Yeah, it makes Leon Ruff look like a bit of a chum, can't fight his own battles and need uh, other help and these other idiots are getting involved and stuff. So it's basically just an angle between Damien Priest and Johnny Gargano seemingly at the moment. Again, the whole thing's going to end up like that. I'm taking him some liquid. So uh, Cameron Grimes enters... Uh, enter the sort of ring. The zombie ref from two weeks ago is there. Um, Dexter Loomis enters. Johnny Gargano refuses to look at Dexter Loomis, covering his eyes. He's scared. Oh, no, 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 no. You're scaring the shit out of me. Dexter puts his. Uh, Dexter, put, Dexter Loomis puts his uh, hood on. Uh, Cameron Grimes puts his hood on. Dexter Loomis just stands in the middle of the ring, motionless, not doing anything, just standing there, uh, apart from moving back when Cameron Grice, uh, Cameron Grice try, tries a dive, uh, for some unknown reason, does a move that he's never done before, just straightforward Superman dives at him, and somehow, spookily, uh, Cameron Grice, uh, Dexter Loomis just moves backwards, like he can possibly see through that hood. Um, surely he can't see through the hood. This is a kind of match that lends itself to have an audience participation where um, if the face is moving, if somebody's moving uh, towards the, their opponent, the crowd can go, yay, or boo, or cold, or hot, if you've ever played the cold and hot game. Um, so Cameron Grimes is on his arse, he's just moving backwards and to get out of the way of something that he can't see. The referee is like inches away from Cameron Grimes, which is really, really stupid. So you kind of think, what the hell is he doing? Um, there's no need for the referee to be anywhere near him. This <laughs> is just stood there. Like, uh, if this was a game uh, and the controller was taken out and yours is the only controller that's working. Uh, and your opponent's controller is not working. That's what it's. That's what it looks like. So um, Cameron Grimes is just swinging for the fences blindly. Uh, as I say, the ref's way too close to him for no real reason at all. The ref can just stand in one corner and watch everything play out. But he's just uh, he's obviously a part of the the actual act itself, and um, he stood behind. Cameron Grimes in the corner. <clears throat> like, why the hell are you there, Ref? Come on, this is so telegraphed, it's so stupid. Um, so Cameron Grimes back elbows the ref. He doesn't know it's the ref, starts stomping the ref on the ground, completely taking the ref out. Clearly, this ref has has been training. He, he's taken bumps before, he's, he's taken back bumps, he's taken kicks. He must have done some sort of in ring work to take all that shit. Um then Cameron Grimes takes off his hood for some reason because maybe he thinks, ah, oh, he's beaten Dexter Loomis. Dexter Loomis all this time has just been stood in the ring, in the middle of the ring, um, not doing anything. So while he is maskless and Dexter just stood there, Dexter's just like, shh. 
Um, going back to the um, the aspect of the crowd, I mean, the crowd are dead. So they're not really playing along as, much, as, as well as they should be. So they're not doing the yay, boo, cold or hot thing uh, until about now where they're starting to liven up a little bit. Um, so going back to uh, what I was saying earlier or just previous to that, Cameron Gray starts creeping about. He's, he's pointing to the ceiling. He's pointing to the moon because he's about to try and hit the cave-in on uh, on Dexter Loomis. <clears throat> Goes for the cave-in. Dexter Loomis is sidesteps and then hits uh, Cameron Grimes. They start brawling. Um, Cameron Grimes takes off. <laughs> He's hit by Dexter Loomis, falls down, takes the blindfold off or the hood, and then they start brawling again. Dexter Loomis just takes takes Cameron Grimes to the woodshed, as JR would say. Uh, they're outside. He's throwing him from pillar to post. Uh, he's trying to get this, these, his silence move on. He's throwing him from, uh, it used to be plexiglass or whatever it is now, the, the chain things, the fences. Uh, from one one end to the next, uh, or around the ring, then he does it a third time, and Cameron Grimes is able to scale the fence um, and climbs into the crowd and runs away. So this ends in no finish whatsoever. Um, so this feud must continue. It would have probably been better if there was an ending to this somehow or other. Um, but no, there's going to be yet another match. Who knows what kind of match? There's been a chair involved. There's been blindfolds involved. Uh, I don't know. Who, who knows? If you know in the comments, in, in uh, Facebook land, in Twitter land, Give us your suggestions as to what this match could possibly be. I'll, I'll put up a comment later on at some stage. Then we get uh, William Regal chatting with... Uh, he's admonishing Damien Priest backstage. He's saying, what the hell do you think you're doing? Getting involved in all this kind of stuff. You're a bloody pillock. Um, um, Damien Priest is, is like, oh, well, yeah, it's just a joke. I'm just trying to have a bit of fun. And Leon Ruff comes up and just says, hey, what? I'm not a joke. Do you think I'm a joke? Uh, if I'm not here to uh, win championships, then I should be here in the first place. And uh, William Regal kind of agrees. And uh, Leon Ruff slaps Damien Priest in the face and then flounces off, storms off to get uh, William Regal. Is just like, huh, serves you right for that. Which, yeah, it's a, a good segment. Uh, probably does serve him right. <clears throat> Uh, we come back, there's a War Games announcement. There must have been some sort of um, advert for War Games or something because the uh, announcers are going on about War, war Games. Um, the feed that I'm watching doesn't show anything about War Games at all, uh, apart from like little inserts later on. So there's no advert, so we, there, there must be a War Games announcement imminent, which there is later on during the show, which I will come to. And um, then we get Candice LeRae, uh, and Indy Hartwell versus Casey Catanzara and Caden Carter uh, in a, a women's tag team match, which is a bit of an, a, a fairly enjoyable match. Um, there's a good few bits of double team moves from uh, Casey and from Caden. Uh, they're very quick, they're very fast, they're, they're very innovative in the moves. Um, I'm, Patient to say that a few of their one of their moves looks like a um, what we see machine gun kind of move where they're running the ropes and one's on the floor and then um, Casey drop kicks uh, one of the girls. They're very very smart in their moves. It's very quick. Uh, Candy kind of takes over. Um, Candice and Indy take over, uh, cutting the ring in half dominating over the smaller uh, Casey Catanzaro. Uh, Indy Hartwell hits a, a sidewalk slam at one stage. Um, and then later on in the match, Caden Carter comes back uh, with a, a flurry, with a hot tag, uh, to the extent where Barrett says something about um, Caden hits 
uh, Lucha Strong Style, which is a, a new one on me. Um, then in the uh, ensuing closing minutes of the match, uh, Candice hits a brain buster type move on Caden Carter. Uh, then she hits a wicked stepsister and gets the three count whilst Casey Catanzaro is being held hostage by uh, Indy Hartwell on the outside and gives her a big boot so she can't come back in. And Candice and Indy win the match. Then we get a video package for Arturo Ulas, who was bizarrely um, a kind of jobber, a enhancement talent on NXT for years and years and years. Then you saw him on uh, Raw Underground beating a few guys up and putting them in arm locks and tapping them out. Uh, and then, oddly enough, he was drafted to Raw in the recent draw uh, in the recent draft. So it's like, what are you doing here? Uh, are you drafted or not? So, apparently not. He's not drafted anymore. They come to think of it, you never heard him mentioned on Raw anyway. At some stage, we will have a Raw uh, podcast. Um, if anyone wants to uh, listen to that or record it, oh, I'm willing to do that. We've got a video package of EO entering the building with a carry case and stuff. So, as mentioned, as kind of predicted, Arturo Ruiz gets a jobber entrance. So, why have all that video package for him? Uh, as he's already in the ring. So, the 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 indications are there that he's not going to win this match <coughs> uh, by virtue of the fact of what I just said about him being drafted and undrafted and whatever else and having a jobber entrance because Kashida comes in the ring gets a full entrance um, uh, it's it's basically obvious that he's going to win for some reason they uh, cut during the match to a, a interview or a Mackenzie Mitchell is talking about. Finn Balor, so maybe they're sowing the seeds for a Finn Balor versus Kashida contest, who knows. Um, Mackenzie rambles on about uh, Finn being on the show later on, Um, but they haven't seen him yet. He's due to be here, but where is he? He's not here yet, but he will be here soon. Um, Kashida and Arturo Ross actually have a very good match in, in my opinion it's, it's very uh, submission based very kick based there's an uh, arm lock that uh, that Arturo Ross is going for and Kashida uh, all the time he's working on his arm uh, it's almost like a Kimura yeah it's a, like a Kimura lock um, standing Kimura he gets him grounded as Grounded Kimura, um, Kashida gets out by um, kicks, using his kicks and using his submission moves. Uh, he's kicking Arturo Ruas in, the, in his arm, working on his arm as well. Uh, Arturo Ruas is all over uh, Kashida at some point. At one point, uh, again, working on the arm and wrist, double wrist lock. Um, and it's Two count from a pin in predicament. Pin in predicament, that's an old one. Um, during the closing stages of the match, uh, Kashida comes back with more kicks, stomps on the hands of Arturo Ruiz. Uh, Arturo Ruiz has to block a, a kick. Arturo Ruiz gets a capoeira kick. Uh, there's a standing switch. They trade some more holds. Um, and then uh, Arturo Ruas is pinned. Uh, gets a bridging. It's a weird looking leg lock kind of pinfall move from Kushida. I can't remember what it's called. I don't know if they even mention what its name is. But it's like um, going for a sort of sharpshooter. But instead of flipping over. Arturo Ruiz onto his stomach and then arching backwards for Arturo Ruiz to, um, to tap out. Kashida leaves Arturo Ruiz on his back and then he arches back into like a, if you were doing a scorpion deathlock um, or a Indian deathlock, 
and gets the pin. He arches back, keeps his own shoulders up. Uh, Arturo Reyes, his shoulders are pinned. He could have even tapped with that move, I suppose. Um, and he's kind of gutted, but he didn't get the match. It was a good competitive match. Uh, we'd like to see more of Arturo Reyes, especially in his guise of what he's doing now, some sort of shooter, a capoeira kind of guy. If I'm even saying that word right, capoeira, capoeira, capoeira. Um, if he was uh, in a in his own kind of program, if he had a manager, a mouthpiece of some description. Then we get a backstage interview segment uh, with, I think that was Mackenzie or one of the generic blonde ladies uh, with Ember Moon and Tony Storm. Uh, Ember Moon talks up their match with <clears throat> Dakota Kai and uh, uh, Raquel Gonzalez. Um, and says she's got no problem with them so long as she's got Tony Storm with a baby and all that kind of stuff. Then uh, And then passes the mic to Tony Storm. Tony Storm says, yeah, yeah there's no problem. But when it comes to the uh, Women's Championship, you're kind of like, eh, that was a strange turn. Uh, nobody mentioned the Women's Championship. So uh, maybe there's some sort of uh, rivalry that's going to start between Ember and Tony, which would be a good physical match to see, I suppose. Um, so... Ember's just like, uh, well, we don't need to worry about that. Let's just, men- let's just uh, worry about these two chumps that we've got to take care of. So we get uh, another hype video uh, about the title match at the end of the show with various NXT stars. You see Road Dog, you see Thatcher, uh, you see Tommaso Chamba, you see HBK, uh, you see Kushida, you see footage of... EO coming off the In Your House set uh, when there was In Your House. You even see Triple H as well. Uh, you see footage of um, Rhea winning the championship. So it's a good hype. It's a good hype contest. It's a good hype video that hypes up the contest between the two girls. Uh, next, the Kai. And Raquel Gonzalez versus Tony Storm and Ember Moon. Um, Raquel Gonzalez dominates really early on, uses her strength, uses her power. Um, both cut off the ring um, quite well. Um, Raquel Gonzalez uh, enables. Kai to use a corner kicks, face washes, gets a one count, uh, taking over Tony Storm quite well. Tony Storm comes back, it's uh, like a headbutt on the Kota Kai. <clears throat> um, then, a, like a low drop kick, gets a two count from that. Uh, Ember Moon comes in. Uh, takes out the Kota Kai. It's back and forth action. There's picture in picture, which I have to skip because I hate picture in picture. Um, so coming back from picture in picture, because I'm not watching it, uh, these picture in picture adverts, I can't see what's going on. They distract me. Uh, Ember Moon uh, kicks Raquel Gonzalez in the face. Ember Moon gets a, a top rope code breaker on Raquel Gonzalez um, for a two count, which is broken up by Dakota Kai. Uh, chases Dakota Kai out of the ring, booted in the face by Raquel Gonzalez. Um, Raquel Gonzalez gets uh, snake eyes on eight, um, Ember Moon on the ring apron, uh, gets her back in the ring. Raquel Gonzalez is stretching out Ember Moon in like a gory bomb type of moves, but type of position, but doesn't do the, the end bit where you fall back and she uh, flops on her face. She just... Um, it's just stretching her out. She doesn't tap out. Uh, releases the hold. <clears throat> um, actually, she gets out of the hold. Um, Ember Moon tries to get a tag and then is pounced by uh, Raquel Gonzalez. So she tries to tag in. Um, she's, she gets pounced. She gets covered. Uh, it's a two count only. Kai tags in, covers Ember Moon just for a two. Um, and then gets the hot tag on Tony Storm. 
Tony Storm hits three German suplexes, but the way she does it, she like she does this sort of shimmy, the um, Eddie Guerrero shimmy sort of, but you kind of like, uh, no, he, he just did vertical suplexes. The the only two people that I could think of that did the um, three Germans was Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit, uh, possibly also um, Brock Lesnar as well, but he did like 16 of them in a row. Um, but it was it's more that she's kind of referencing the wrong person doing the wrong uh, doing the wrong move. Um, there's a double down in the ring. Um, both Dakota Kai and Tony Storm just flat out in the uh, middle of the ring, and let me just see where my notes. Tony Storm gets a roll up on uh, on on Dakota Kai for three. When they're celebrating, uh, Candice and Indy, Indy Hartwell turn up. They mug Tony Storm and Ember Moon, beat them up in the in the ring, throw them back in the ring. Uh, Raquel Gonzalez hits a single arm power bob on uh, Tony Storm, and then on the Ember Moon. Um, and commentary uh, mention War Games. Uh, is this a potential team up? between Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai uh, and Indy Hartwell and Candice. And if so, who are Tony Storm and uh, Ember Moon going to pick for their partner, for their team? <clears throat> Will one turn on the other? Much like the uh, the one that happened last year. Um, we then get footage of the four jerks, as I put them, uh, turning up. Um, the can, the can, um, the Brit Am brawlers of Birch and Lorcan and uh, Pete Dunn and Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee says, Yeah, we're going to be here later when we got something to say. La di da di da di da. So uh, they, they then cut back to Io Shirai warming up, um, doing pull ups and whatever else. Then there's a match between August Gray and Timothy Thatcher. August Gray's already in the ring, so we know the outcome of this match uh, already before it's even hit. Um, this is a hard hitting match. Thatcher is uh, all over August Gray with submission holds, arm locks, leg locks, uh, key locks of all sorts. Eventually hits. Uh, like a sleeper kind of move. There is a word for it. Um, before he actually does, he hits a beautiful butterfly suplex. Then he puts him in a grommet, I think. That's what Barrett calls it. Um, it's like a, like a stranglehold sort of dragon sleeper without you having to hook your legs up on uh, the waist of uh, the opponent. And August Gray taps out. So, whilst uh, August Grey is on the deck, uh, and Timothy Thatcher is celebrating his win, uh, uh, Timothy Thatcher decides to put the move on again, and he is uh, admonished by the ref, but then you hear uh, Tommaso Ciampa's music hit, and Tommaso Ciampa comes out, stares him down, Walks into the ring, stares him down again, and uh, Timothy Asher says, oh, I've got no problem with you, I've got no issue with you. So you, you, you kind of think, in the first instance when he came out, it was uh, um, maybe scouting him for a possible tag team. Um, but no, um, doesn't seem like that's what's going to happen, first of all. But it, it's weird because it's like the. Um, the promo that he was cutting, that Trampa was cutting last week, saying that he was sick of all the uh, the soft guys acting hard. This is a hard man that he should be respecting, that he should be teaming with. Um, so Trampa's interviewed backstage afterwards. Um, the interview just says, what was all that about? Or were to the effect of? Uh, and Trampa just says, well, isn't it obvious? I want to fight with Thatcher. So, okay, there is going to be some sort of uh, uh, fight between the two of them. 
Um, and Damien Priest is the next match. We don't know who he's actually supposed to be, um, who his opponent was. I, it was never advertised. I don't remember who it was. Um, he's making his entrance. He's doing his bow and arrow stuff. The entrance is dark, so you don't see anything. Um, he does his bow and arrow taunt on the stairs. It's actually from out of the under under the under side of the ring. Uh, Johnny Gargano jumps, mugs uh, Damian Priest. He's fighting with Damian Priest on the outside, hitting him with punches, hitting him with kicks. Um, Priest comes back. Uh, Priest hits. Uh, Johnny Gargano with elbows, with more kicks, uh, punches. Damien Priest puts Johnny Gargano on the announce table. Uh, Johnny Gargano gets off, uh, hits uh, Priest with more punches and kicks. Uh, then Damien Priest gets a chair. Um, what he's going to do with that chair, nobody knows. Maybe it's going to be a TLC match upcoming between he and... Um, Gargano and the next person that comes in, which is Leon Ruff. Ruff comes in, um, decides to leapfrog over um, Gargano, uh, who runs in the Damien Priest, who's, who's dangling on the crotch on the rope. Um, so Gargano goes into Priest, Priest is on the floor. Uh, Gargano goes for Ruff, Ruff ducks, flings. Gargano out the ring. Ruff is in the ring on his own, holding the belt up. Uh, victorious, pointing at both guys on the floor, mugging them off, uh, calling them both chums. And then you get the the the, uh, the pose or the camera work that they've been using lately, where uh, the duck, the downed opponent, comes from under something. So both Gargano and Priest are on the floor. You see them come up. They rise up. Um, Rion Ruff's smile vanishes from his face as both Johnny Gargano and Damian Priest hit the ring. Then Ruff comes out of the ring, he rushes out of the ring, um, run, uh, with his belt held high. Uh, and both Gargano and Priest just stare each other out like a pissed off. They don't lay hands, they just stare each other out. We got an uh, announcement from. Bad News Brown, who says Bad News Brown, Bad News Barrett, flipping it, Bad News Brown's from the 80s. Bad News Barrett says, ah, oh, he hates to be the bearer of bad news, ironically enough, uh, and announces that he's not going to be there next week. Doesn't say why he's not going to be there next week. Uh, so he's not going to be announcing next week, but he has a replacement in Kevin Owens. So Kevin Owens is going to be the guest commentator next week. Get a recap of Boa and the mystery man um, who they say something like Shifu, uh, Shifu, which is which translates to master, I think that's what they say. Um, <laughs> William Regal goes to Boa's house, uh, to his apartment. Uh, he's got a freaking camera crew with him. So he goes, knocks on his door, Boa comes out, his eyes are black, he's wearing a black hoodie, looks like he hasn't slept in days. And he just says, oh, no, uh, she is coming. She is coming. And William Regal says, what are you on about, you, you pillock? Uh, you haven't been at the performance center for a whole week. You, you need to be there. You're supposed to be there at the train. But um, Bo just keeps saying, she is coming. She is coming. Um, and Regal says, she, well, well, if, do you mean Zaya? Where's Zaya? And uh, Bo just says, no, no, I don't mean Zaya. She is coming. <laughs> so Regal's just like, what the hell are you talking about? She's been missing too. Uh, she, where, where, where's she at? And he just says, she is coming, and shuts the door, and William Regal just looks perplexed. And we cut back to uh, Rhea Ripley backstage, uh, warming up. There's a tail of the tape that shows that EO is five foot one. Uh, she's small. I didn't realize she was that small. I didn't realize Rhea Ripley was five foot ten. Uh, the signature move for EO is a moonsault. The signature move for Rhea is the Riptide. Uh, the intangibles is the, for EO is disciplined wrist taker. Discipline? She's definitely a wrist taker. Her moonsaults are a bit off sometimes. She, she's very dangerous. She p hits people in their face, in their face, and 
and their legs. Uh, so it's, I don't know if discipline is the right word. Risk taker, sloppy risk taker, maybe. Uh, the intangible for Rhea, she feeds off emotions. So I don't know what the hell that means. Uh, 184, sorry, 164 days and counting as NXT Women's Champion is Io and uh, Rhea's accomplishment, accomplishments is that she's a former NXT UK and a former NXT Women's Champion. So she is doing well. All she needs to do is to go up to, uh, is to be put on Raw and SmackDown, maybe win the winning, the Women's Royal Rumble, win uh, money in the bank, win the tag team titles with someone, uh, win the Raw and SmackDown champion, and she would be like a complete Grand Slam champion. Uh, Leon Ruff is backstage uh, during the commercial break. He uh, <laughs> he's walking, look like he's going home. William Regal walks up saying, "Well, what the bloody hell do you think you're doing?" And uh, Ruff just says he's not a joke, and he will face both. Uh, Damien Priest and uh, uh, Johnny Gargano in a match possibly next week could it be a tables and chairs match who knows then we come to the main event it's Rio uh, it's Rhea even I don't know who Rio is Rio from AEW no it's definitely not her uh, Rhea Ripley versus Io Shirai uh, EO does not have Poppy to sing her out this time. It's not that kind of a show. Um, so Rhea just completely towers above um, EO. And um, she, oh, my friend's just, uh, Vanessa Clifford is my friend. She's just messaged me back saying it's Mark Story who is the friend. So Mark Story, if you're listening, thank you for listening and thank you for following, etc., etc. Probably a few more people that I will give a shout out to at the end of the show from the Facebook group, which I will find uh, shortly. So EO is very fast and very, uh, she's very, she's, she's not afraid. She's very cocksure. She's slapping Rhea in her face. They both go for a lockup. Uh, Rio stands her ground in the lockup. Um, she reverses the lockup. Uh, she seemingly as strong, uh, if not quicker, or obviously quicker than the, the stronger and more domineering Rhea Ripley. Uh, Io is able to hit flips, uh, uh obviously, moonsaults and uh, kicks as well. Um, there's another update on Finn during this match, so it's just like, okay, enough of the updates on Finn. This is a, a women's title match. Um, there is, and then uh, there's more picture in picture, so I need to skip the picture in picture, which I did, and it showed uh, like during the commercial break, um, she EO being kicked in the face. They're in the ring. Uh, Io is in a body scissors. Um, yeah, Rhea has Io in a body scissors. Then she reverses that ground and pounds. Uh, Rhea, which is I've never seen that before, but it's pretty effective. It enables Rhea to release the hold, uh, course to the corner. Uh, Io tries the double knees into the corner, but that is reversed. Um, she is slammed face first by Rhea. Um, um, Rhea is just stomping all over Io Shirai at this point. Then we get um, Rhea is stretching out uh, like an seated abdominal stretch. Uh, she's not using any elbows, she's stretching her out, trying to wear her down. We get picture in picture of Finn actually arriving in to the arena. He's in the car park, mosey on, moseying on in. Um, Rio's got a stretch on still. It's reversed. Io, uh, it's a, a German from the middle rope uh, onto Rio as, as uh, Rio was on the middle rope. Um, Io is has worked on Rio's arm 
to such an extent that it's it's really really bad then we get to like the part of the match where it starts to really heat up um this is like it's like this match the, the part of this match so far is like the feeling out process but then uh eo hits a, a drop kick whilst onto Rhea whilst Rhea is like sat on the on the ground but it's in a way where she must uh hit Rhea's ear uh and it busts open her ear her ears bleeding right where the, the flesh tunnel is or whatever you call it um uh and kind of disorientates Rhea uh so Rhea's is busted open um blood's pouring down her face then uh, EO goes for a, a cross face so she's got the cross face on um, obviously Rhea does not tap from the cross face um, but it's reversed um, reversed to a, a two count so EO has to release the hold Rhea then looks at the blood on her hands from here takes the, looks at the blood from here yeah, on her hand and wipes the blood on her face like uh, the way that Tony Storm has the uh, black marker just below her eye so she's got like a, a red um, streak on her eye which is uh, her own blood um, and then there's a cross arm breaker on Rhea uh, Rhea uh, rolls out the ring Rhea is slammed into the ring step into the ring steps arm first uh, so her arms again being worked on um Eo's on the ring apron uh and snaps the uh snaps off Rhea's arm uh again working on that arm again for a possible uh, cross arm breaker later on in the match possibly um there's a little kind of weird bit where they're both on the ring apron where there's a slight hesitation and Rhea has to kind of direct uh Eo so she's just like come on uh it's only for a brief second, and uh, Eo yeah, Eo takes uh, Eo throws Rhea into the ring steps. Arm bars are on the outside, and then in the ring, Eo gets a one uh, one count off that a face stomp, uh, and then back into the arm bar. There's more stomps. Uh, goes for a top rope move, but Rhea counters. Rhea and Eo are on the top rope for a superplex. Uh, she gets to see perplex uh, for a two. Um, well, uh, Rhea pins uh, or attempts to pin uh, Eo for a three, but only gets a two. There's a slugfest uh, fighting each other. Um, Rhea then hits the standing cloverleaf. I can't remember what the hell the name is. Uh, she spins around. It's it seated, uh, so Eo is on the floor, uh, on the ground. She, she's not tapping, she's in serious pain. Uh, and then she well, nearly taps. Um, she doesn't tap, she goes for a rope, breaks uh, a rope, break, hits, uh, gets the rope, it breaks. Uh, then uh, I put that Rhea counters the Riptide, but it's Rhea's move. So I'm assuming that it's Eo. Uh, Rhea goes for the kit. Uh, that's it. Eo counters the Riptide as uh, Rhea Ripley goes for the uh, the Riptide, but she counters it into an armbar as a really slick counter. Um, she has her in the armbar for. Uh, quite a bit. Um, attempt then uh, Rhea attempts to count the armbar into a power bob, and Eo ho- holds on the armbar. Um, so Rhea has to get to the ropes with her leg. Um, then Rhea hangs on the second rope. Eo goes for a six one nine, misses. Goes for another six one nine, misses. Uh, slaps Rhea. A couple of times, Rhea goes to the other side uh, into the uh, 619 position. This time, EO hits the 619 um, and hits a, a top rope 
kick for just a two count. Goes for a moonsault, misses, lands on her feet, uh, gets clotheslined and gets turned inside out by Rhea. Um, then the there's a another ring eight remove. Uh, Rhea just crawls out of the ring. She's hanging onto the middle rope. Um, Io runs uh, to the opposite side, flips out to the uh, to where I- uh, Rhea is holding onto the ring ropes. Um, goes for like a sunset bomb kind of move, but she lands on her feet. Uh, Rhea holds on. Rhea's really holding on, but she doesn't hold on uh, well enough. And somehow uh, Io uses her strength uh, to pull Rhea off the rope, carries her to the announce table, power bombs her through the announce table. Uh, like neck first. It looks really rough, but it's really, really good. Um, then EO gets into the ring, uh, goes to the corner. She's exhausted. She's waiting for the count out. The ref counts up to eight, uh, nearly counts to nine. Uh, Rhea gets back in the ring. EO spots Rhea getting into the ring. Um, and she's just like, oh, bloody hell. I, I, I can't believe this is happening. Uh, so goes up to the top rope and hits uh, a moonsault, but this time the um, um, this time Rhea is on her stomach instead of on her on her back because I think the last time when she was hit by the uh, top rope moonsault, uh, she was hit in the face by uh, Eel. So again, it's a lethal move, kind of sloppily done. This time it's kind of crisp. Um, kind of slick. She hits the moonsault on uh, onto Rhea uh, whilst Rhea is on her front um, and rolls her over, covers her for the one, two, three, retains the title. Uh, which is a, a, an absolutely fantastic match from beginning to end, in, in my opinion. If it, at 4.75 stars, if not five stars. Uh, in my humble opinion. Um, so they are both showing loads of respect to each other. Um, they are hugging outside the ring. Um, uh, Ripley goes for the, uh, tries to put Io's um, hand up, uh, but uh, <laughs> kind of miscommunication. So she just goes backstage. Finn comes in. Finn comes in and says he's a bad son of a bitch because he's got three plates in his jaw from from a jo- uh, broken jaw. Uh, Pat McAfee and the boys show up. Says that they, they're running the show uh, in a short space of time. They've taken out a bunch of geezers. Uh, they've taken out Drake, uh, who's got like nice hair, but he's, he's short, according to Pat. Um, Killian Dane have taken out the big hairy Shrek dude. He keeps saying, dead! Dead, dead, Roderick Strong, Breezango, he goes to do the Breezango, but Pete Dunn uh, puts his hand down, and he, um, Pat McAfee just says, dead, uh, says that they're the, the uh, um, uh, Lorcan and Birch are the greatest tag team on Earth and the moon. Uh, they try to jump in the ring, Pat McAfee demands the belt off Finn. Uh, but then Finn says it's easy for the mice to play when the cat's away. But look what the cat has dragged in. And the Undisputed Era show up. He storm the ring. There's a big brawl. Uh, Mike Adam Cole uh, takes out. Adam Cole takes out Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee's just on the floor, just sprawled out. The show ends uh, with a big brawl. And that's it. It's a good show. I thought it was... I did see uh, an uh, AEW. I will be discussing AEW in the next podcast with Joe. Um, the uh, Apart from the, the blindfold match, it could have been uh, a better ending, some sort of finish. Do we have to see these guys again? Um, so I thought it was a, a, a decent enough show. It wasn't too shabby. It wasn't piss poor in any way um again 
I will be in the AEW podcast shortly. Just want to shout out a few guys from the podcast. I'm going to shout out uh, Vanessa, who uh, is a good friend, and she just turned on a friend of hers, Mark Story, to the podcast. So, Mark Story, thanks for listening. Thanks for following. Uh, leave your feedback if you can. Join the Facebook page if you can as well. Um, shout out to Carl Pickup, to James, James Richard, who's actually on the podcast itself, um, and to a bunch of other guys uh, on the podcast. There is somebody else in spe- specifically that I wanted to shout out, but I can't find his name. His name is uh, Greg, Greg Noble. That's the guy. Uh, shout out to Greg Noble as well. You left some good feedback. So again, follow us uh, on Podbeam. Follow the podcast on Podbeam. Uh, listen to the podcast on Podbeam. Follow us on Facebook. Join the group on Fed, um, Facebook. Follow me on Twitter at Yardi316. Follow the podcast on Twitter at Hardcam Podcast, uh, and we shall see you all very, very. We shall, uh, yeah, we shall see you very soon.